so everybody knows the Roger Bannister story. Right? Roger Bannister, before Roger Bannister, the truth was it was impossible to run a mile in less than four minutes. Everybody knew this. The professors had theories about why that was true. There were studies about the human body to show that it was impossible to run the mile in less than four minutes. And then a guy named Roger Bannister came along who didn't read about what was impossible. He just did it. And when he did it, all the experts who had said, yeah, no, 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 it's impossible, changed their mind. Because it was obviously possible. Now, in the circles of Washington right now, there's a truth. And the truth is that it's impossible to get ordinary Americans to care about the corruption in their government and do anything about it. It's impossible to rally people to vote on the basis of this issue, to show up, to do anything to change it. It's impossible. But I want you to look around. Does this look like impossible to you? Because to me, this looks like the first victory of the American Revolution version too. To me, this looks like the beginning of something that of course began many, many years before this. 1999, that woman on that poster, Doris Haddock, Granny D. <laughs> Granny D started a walk. She started in Los Angeles on January 1st, 1999, and 13 months later, 3,200 miles later, she ended up in Washington, D.C. The last mile, she was surrounded by congressmen who had gotten in their cars and driven out to walk with her for these final steps. She walked across the country with a sign in her chest that said, Campaign Finance Reform. And when she did that, she had no illusion that she was solving the problems of money in politics. But she did believe she was starting something. And I believe she was starting something. And when people in this group gathered in Dixville Notch on January 11th, 2014, and we marched from Dixville Notch to Nashua, did I tell you that's in January? In January, more than 200 people participating, 20 of us who made every single step, we knew she had started something. So I want to right now ask those people in this in this audience who were on that march to raise your hand. Incredible people. Yeah. An incredible group who demonstrated this commitment. And now this second march is an extraordinary success. Thanks to the work of Jeff McLean, this is an extraordinary success. And then in January, we're going to do it again. We're going to march again. And then in January in 2016, we're going to march again. And by the time we march in 2016, there will not be a single politician in the state, including those people running for president, who has not been forced to answer this fundamental question. What will you do to end the system of corruption in Washington? And then everyone in the state will listen to those answers and decide who to vote for on the basis of who gets that answer right. And when that happens here, it will change the direction of the 2016 presidential campaign, and we will have a chance to win back a democracy that's been taken from us from that tiny fraction, by that tiny fraction of the 1% who fund our elections. It began here. It began here at the first victory of the second American Revolution. Now, yesterday, Another impossible thing happened. After we did this march, many people said to me, how are we going to win something beyond New Hampshire? So we announced the idea of creating a super PAC big enough to win a Congress that would win fundamental reform by 2016. And to do that, we said we were going to crowdfund at least half of that money. So on May 1st, we announced we were going to crowdfund a million dollars in 30 days. And in 13 days, we raised a million dollars. And then on June 4th, we announced the second 
goal, five million dollars in 30 days. By Independence Day, to be able to say we had declared independence. And I can tell you, that every single night from June 4th to January, to July 4th, feels like till January 4th to me, I was awake most of the night thinking, how are we ever going to do this? And even one week before, our team was beginning to talk about, what do we do if we don't do this? And two days ago, when we were one and a half million dollars from reaching our goal, every single person said it was impossible for us to do this. There was no way for us to do this. And then yesterday morning, George Takai, Star Trek, always comes in to save the day, tweeted us, and there was an explosion of recognition and support. And through the course of the day, the number of people contributing grew and grew. And in the middle of the day, I asked our data people to look at it. And they said, you know, you know, if we stay open until the end of July 4th in Hawaii, we'll cross the five million dollar mark. They were wrong. We crossed the five million dollar mark at 9.15 last night, Eastern Standard Time. So this is the plan. We have to do a series of impossible things that began with the impossible task of an 88-year-old woman walking across the United States. That was the first impossible task. And then mobilizing hundreds of people to walk across New Hampshire in January, and, and half a thousand people to walk across New Hampshire's coast in July. These are the impossible things we have to do. And then when we build enough resources to take on this corrupt system. That's the third impossible thing, and this series of impossible steps will get us to that impossible idea of a democracy that actually works again. I am grateful to everybody for being here, for supporting this movement, for showing the impossible is possible, because that's how we win. Thank you very much.